Hello everyone. Now in this video we will study about the design of the gearbox, which is the chapter of design of mechanical systems. Now what are the learning objectives of this chapter? Now as per our university guidelines, now the main objective of this chapter is to prepare layout of machine tool gearbox and select number of teeth on each gear. Now, in numerical, we will see in detail that what is the meaning of it, but this is just a theory part, so we will discuss here theory only. Now, first we will see about introduction to gearbox. Now, what is gearbox? Now, as we know, gearbox is a mechanical device which is used to transfer power. Now, technically, with the power, it has few more functions. Now, what are those functions? Now, if you check for importance of a gearbox, you will come to know that it has two important features. Those are number one, it has speed variation. Now, we can vary the speed with the help of a gearbox. Similarly, we can vary the torque transmission with the variation. Now, if we take the example of a two wheeler. Or four wheeler will come to know that it has multiple gears. It has a reverse gear in case of four wheeler, and we have first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, and etc. Now the thing is, as you will change the gear, you will get more speed. Now, in case of first gear, the speed is lesser one, but the torque is greater. Now, in case of the second gear, the speed you will get it more than the first one, but torque will be reduced. Now, if we go with this, we will come to know at the highest speed of a gear, we will get lesser torque. So, that is why whenever we require higher speed, at that time, we use higher gear. And whenever we require lesser speed and more torque, we will go with the lesser gear. Now, similarly, we have reverse gears also. After this, now, how we can determine or how do we determine this variable speed range? Now, there are few progressions in our syllabus. Through those pro progressions, we can decide which should be selected. Now, there are four progressions as you can see here. First one is arithmetic progression, geometric progression, logarithmic progression, and harmonic progression. Now, what is meaning of it? Now, through these progressions, we can determine that what should be the speed to the first gear, what should be the speed to the second one, third one, and more than that. But out of all these four types, we use geometric progressions. Now, what are the reasons to choose this geometric progression? Now, there are three main reasons through which or because of which we use geometric progression. Number one, if we select a geometric progression, First one, there is a constant loss of economy cutting speed in the whole RPM range. Now, suppose the gearbox is having a range of 10 RPM to 1000 RPM. Now, in that, while making the gears, there is a cutting speed or there is a speed which cuts the gear while manufacturing. Now, the thing is, there is a constant loss of it. Now, we'll see in detail again. Second one, there is a constant loss of productivity in the whole RPM range. And the third one, it's a better design features. Now, how do we determine this constant loss? Now, whatever we have seen three reasons before, we will check out the same reasons over here. First one, the optimum cutting speed for material should be maintained by every cut, for every cut. Now, while manufacturing a gear, the optimum speed, the minimum speed, or suitable cutting speed should be maintained for every cut. Now the thing is, while cutting this, as the diameter is reduced in each cut, the speed has to increase. And due to this, due to the step regulation drive, the RPM values are provided such that for one cut, all the others cut will not be operated at the optimum cutting speed. Now this is we are talking about stepped regulation drive. Now in that, if we we'll 
get this point it tells you that for one cut if you are using 10 rpm then for the next cut it will be automatically not operated at 10 rpm means the same speed will not be maintained now what it what will happen there they will operate at a lower cutting speed so this difference between two cutting speed there is a difference between these two cutting speeds so that is why to avoid this we use geometric progression now what it exactly shows now as there is a formula here here we have formula nx plus 1 divided by nx where this x is lower one and x plus 1 it's the next speed that we have it so here through these things we can get a geometric progression ratio similarly loss can be seen here to this values the loss is equal to geometric progression ratio that is phi x minus 1 divided by phi x plus 1 into optimum velocity now through this point we can is we can maintain the constant loss of economic cutting speed instead of just random variation now next second reason is that the constant loss of productivity in the whole rpm range now the thing is the productivity of machining operation is redefined as the surface area of metal removed in time now while manufacturing a gear that disc should be cut by a particular device and that machining operation is done on it to remove the material and that removal of surface area is productivity of machining operation now in case of a stepped drive only one cut will be given the maximum only one cut will give optimum machining of the workpiece and during all other cuts until the changeover there will be loss of productivity now if we we'll check this point and the last point we'll come to know both are exactly similar we are talking about step drives means what in the first step or in the first speed whatever the cut will be given to it it will not the same one to the other speeds so to make that constant loss we use this geometric progression now here the third reason the better design features now to optimize the dimension of a gearbox the proper material selection for each of the gears as well as the provision of multi speed or multi stage arrangements are most essential now we know while designing the gearbox there is a limit of space there is limit of speeds now there is a constant supply of engine speed and there are certain outputs that we need it at gear 1 2 3 4 and all so that is why there should be a proper material selection and also as we are getting with multi speeds and multi stage arrangement there should be a proper dimension of the gearbox which is easily suitable in case of two wheeler or four wheeler whatever machine we are building now the thing is it is difficult to establish the gear ratio in multi speed arrangement so it is therefore suggested to select the ratio and the number of stages to meet the requirement by trial and error now this is the important point as it is difficult to establish the gear ratio in case of multi speeds arrangement so therefore here in this case it's trial and error method with the help of trial and error method we can check for number of stages and we can check for the ratio so this is the problem with the better design feature now this difficulty we can easily overcome by geometric progression ratio now there are two things in this number one in case of geometric progression with the progression ratio every x value is also in the geometric progression with a ratio of phi x now this will be better understand with the example which is next one 
Now the progression ratio multiplied with the constant value also gives value with the geometric progression with each value constant times greater. Now for understanding these two points, we will get it a little bit better. Now how we can write example of a geometric progression? If we we'll get with this, you will come to know that here nx plus 1 is equal to nx into phi, where this phi is geometric progression ratio, where nx plus 1, suppose nx is first speed, x is equal to 1, then x is equal to, if you are taking x is equal to 1, then nx is the first speed, n1, and nx plus 1 is the second speed. Now, if we check it simply, that n2 is equal to phi times of n1. It's a simple ratio. So that is why, because of this, the geometric progression is much more suitable in case of a gear design. Now, this is the formula we have seen. We'll check for the example. Now, for the example, there is a table and there is a speed range in it. Now, the speed starts with n n1 is equal to 30 and it ends with n12 is equal to 375. Now the thing is, if we check for these values, with so these all values are same, it is 1.26. Means what? The progression ratio is constant. So this we have to understand over here that n1, n2, if we relate it, so simply n2 is equal to n1 into this phi. Now, if if we we'll simply multiply this 30 with 1.26, if you we'll simply multiply this 30 with 1.26, you will get this 37.5. But a simple multiple. So this is the feature of a geometric progression ratio, and that is why we use it. Next, we have structural diagram, which is a part of this chapter. Now, in case of a structural diagram, how do we write it? Now, first we will understand its formula, then we will go with it. But how do we write it? If we check for any structural diagram, the formula we can write it like this. The formula is Z is equal to, here it is written, Z is equal to P1 in bracket X1 into P2 in bracket X2 into P3 in bracket X3 and so on. So, it, that it goes up to Pn into Xn. Now, in this, we will check it, what is the meaning of this z? Now, the thing is, here, z is the number of speed steps. Next, what we have it? p value. Now, p is the number of speed steps in transmission group. And x is the characteristics of the transmission group or the number of steps in the spindle are here. Now, just remember this formula. Now, in case of a standard gearbox, how would you determine these values? First one, in case of a standard gearbox, we always try to keep x1 is equal to 1. Now, what is the meaning of x2? x2 is always equal to p1. And x3, it is the multiplication of p1 plus p2. p1 and p2. Now, similarly, if we calculate for x4, it will be p1 into multiplied by p2 into multiplied by p3. Similarly, this will go on. Now, this is regarding structural diagram or structural formula, but we haven't seen what is the meaning of a structural diagram. Now, if we have any gearbox which has three shafts in it, or it is a three stage gearbox, now in this we have a structural diagram which looks like this and it is represented in this term that is 2 is our p1 1 is our x1 p is our p2 2 is our x2 2 is our p3 and 6 is our x3 now this is the thing now in this how do we draw this structural diagram now first we will have to check for number of shafts in it now, it will be given number of shafts, number of stages like that. And as per that, we will draw number of lines in it. 
Now here total we have drawn four shafts. Now here it is one, one, two, three, and four. After drawing these lines, next is the first one, P1, it is this two in bracket one. Now this two part it shows that there should be a two line and one indicates that there should be one common point for these two lines also it should be the distance of one unit between these two lines now if we check it here here we have two lines this is line number one this is line number two and in between these two lines there is a distance of one okay now where to locate these points? If we check for it, now here we have speed steps. Now here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if we count it, this is 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 speed steps. And if we take midpoint of it, it will be 7.5 somewhere. And here we have taken 7.5. Sorry, that is 12, 5.5 something, 6 actually. Now, here we have taken midpoint of it. So, after that, after taking a midpoint of it, we have drawn two lines. Here we have drawn two lines at a distance of 1. Similarly, if we we'll go with 3 in bracket 2, so similarly, what it shows, it shows that there should be three lines from the two points. So here we have two points, point number one, point number two. So there are two points here, and from each point there should be three lines. So there is, suppose here we are going to take point one. So this is point first, this is second, and this is third. The thing is, it is already mentioned that there should be distance of two between each line. So there is a distance of two between each line. So if we check this line A1, so this is one distance, this is two. Again, from this point, this is one distance, this is two. So like that, we have drawn each and everything. Now these are all structural diagrams. So you will see each and everything in detail again while solving a numerical. So this is just an introductory part. Now, these are the variations of it. Next is a ray diagram. So, whatever we have drawn with the structural diagram, the ray diagram is exactly similar. But the thing is, while drawing a ray diagram, we take only the lower or the minimum lines. Now, in case of structural diagram, we have all the lines. But while drawing in the ray diagram, we take minimum lines. Minimum lines means what? Minimum value. The lines which has minimum value. So that is the ray diagram. Next we have speed chart. Now as we will finish with the ray diagram, we can easily draw with the speed chart. Now what it shows, in case of a speed chart, it shows you the total number of speeds. Now in this example there were 12 speeds. So here we are describing about 12 speeds. So it starts with the 1 up to 12. So this is from lower to like that. So this describes speed chart. Next, we have deviation chart. Now deviation chart, in case of a deviation chart, whatever we have deviation in terms of number of depth. So here the deviation chart is drawn. Now the basic deviation chart here we have a deviation and this is our mean line or mid line and this is the lower limit this is the upper limit so in between that with the number of years so this line will come whether it has a deviation or not so that again all these parts we are going to see it in numericals in detail with each and every step so this is just an introduction part. Next, after that, the point is of layout of gearbox. 
Now, after finishing all these things, structural diagram, ray diagram, speed chart, now we have a layout of a gearbox. Now, what we do with this? Now, in this, we do some calculations, and with those calculations, we check it that how we can fix the gears and how many number of gears should be there on each shaft. So, as you can see it here, now here we have machine or a motor. Here, input shaft is connected to motor, and from this input shaft, you can see there is one, three, and five. Fifth gear is connected. Similarly, there is two, four, five, two, four, six, seven, nine, eleven number of gears connected to the second shaft, and for the last one, eight, twenty. So all these 12 gears, those are connected in a particular position on shaft number 1, 2 and 3. And at the end, here we are getting output of it. So with this, we can understand that how many gears can be fixed on each and every shaft and how we can optimize it. Thank you very much. If you have any doubts, let me know. In this video, we are going to discuss one numerical which is of design of mechanical systems that is of uh, semester 8 in mechanical engineering of Mumbai University. And uh, it is a question paper of December 2019. And the question is asked for 20 marks and it is based on the design of gearboxes or gearbox which is of module 6 of syllabus. Now, here in this, we are going to discuss in detail that how we will go with structural diagram, ray diagram, speed chart, deviation, and number of teeth. So, these things are asked in the university question paper and it is repeated every semester, every year. So, that is why it is much important and it is always asked for 20 marks only. So, we will try to solve one by one. Now, if we we'll check with the question, the question is asked in December 2019. Already I told you it is asked for 20 marks and it describes like this. It is required to design 2 into 3 multi-speed gearbox for a lathe machine operation with the following specification. Now, N minimum it is 120 RPM, N motor it is 1500 RPM and GP ratio that stands for geometric progression ratio so gp stands for geometric progression ratio in most of the problems you will see gp ratio only geometric progression because in most of the applications of gearboxes we use ge geometric progression ratio to find number of teeth and all now next it has four sub questions and those are number one a part it describes Write a structural formula and draw structural diagrams, which is asked for 5 marks. Second, B, draw a ray diagram and speed chart, that is also asked for 5 marks. Third one, find the number of teeth of each gear. And the last one, draw a deviation chart. So, we are going to see one by one how we can proceed with this. Now, first we will start with write structural formula and draw structural diagrams, that is A. This Answer this solution is already attached in the link, so you can check it. And in this video, I'll tell you how we can draw with it. So, let us begin now. In this video, we will solve question 2a that is structural formula and uh, its diagram. The first one we will check it on given data now given data shows that it is 2 by 3 multi speed now this 2 by 3 indicates its stages means what total we have two number of stages next we have n minimum that is 120 rpm and N maximum, not N maximum, sorry, it's motor, it is 1500 RPM. 
so we have 1500 rpm and next word it is called as gp ratio that is a geometric progression ratio so it is geometric progression which we are going to denote it by phi and it is equal to 1.41 now this is the given data and from this data we are going to check it how many structural formula we can get and out of that which is the most suitable formula and how we can draw the diagram so let's begin with it now we have already decided or determined that it is two stage prob problem so it's a two and three what these things are we will see one by one now here how we can denote or how we can write structural formula that is important now the structural formula is given by z is equal to p into x1 into p in bracket x2 p3 in bracket x3 and so on now this is the structural formula this is the standard method to write down structural formula now here as we are dealing with only two stages so we don't need this x3 value our structural formula will be p1 in bracket x1 p2 in bracket x2 and the thing is what is meaning of this p1 and p2 x1 and x2 so where this p1 or p2 it stands for speed steps it is stands for stands for speed steps or pair in any stage now we are talking about gear pair pair in any stage and next we have x1 and x2 those are called as characteristics characteristics in each stage now here p1 p2 it is speed steps or it is also called as pair in each stage and x1 and x2 it is characteristics in each stage now we haven't written about z what is meaning of z now z is total number of speeds here total number of speed steps means what through this formula we are going to derive we are we can get how many total speeds we are going to get it with gearbox or in gearbox so we'll see one by one now we know we are having p1 and p2 values but we haven't found found yet x1 and x2 values so that we will see that how we can determine x1 and x2 now our formula general formula it will look like this that is p1 x1 p2 x2 which we can write it like this now here p1 we can write down 2 or p2 we can write down 3 it is like that but getting with this before getting with this we will check for the combinations how many combinations we are going to get it okay this is the standard formula everyone knows it now here we know that this p1 and p2 values those are 2 or 3 or it can be reverse also now how many combinations we are um, how many combinations we are going to get it now the total number of combinations how we can find found out now we know this is two stage formula now total number of combinations for structural formula so we will write down structural formula we can write it like this it is number of stages factorial now here we have two factorial now here we are going to get it two combinations two combinations of x1 and x2 now how we can go with this here for getting combinations we will make one table in that first we will write down about p now in p we are having two values one is two and second is three now we can get with another also that is three and two we are not changing the values we are keeping the same we are just rearranging them so here we have two combination for x how many combinations we can get it that is two combinations now that is two factorial which is equal to two now how we can write that first we will write about x1 then x2 then we will make it reverse then we will write about x2 then we will write down x1 now if we check it 
how we will get four combinations four different combinations now for that first we will take two and three we will get the combination with x1 x2 we will get the another combination with x2 x1 then after that we will get three and two and with this we will get x1 x2 combinations we will get x2 x1 combination so in this all these things we will get total four sf we will write down in short that is sf structural formula so four structural formulas that we are going to get it now how we can proceed with it simple our formula is z is equal to p1 x1 and p2 x2 so we will simply write down in terms of numbers so to avoid confusion we will write down sf1 sf2 like that so first we will write down sf1 it is z is equal to now we will write down about first for 2 and 3 now we will write 2 that is p1 value we will keep the bracket empty then we will write down 3 and we will keep the second bracket that is x2 value is empty now for our standard process we keep x1 is equal to 1 for any standard gearbox we have value x1 is equal to 1 now what about x2 now for x2 we need value of p which is associated with x1 so we need value of p which is associated with x1 that is this one now here as we have already written that x1 should be 1 and for x2 it should be value associated with x1 that is here we have 2 now the first structural formula that we have got is that 2 in bracket 1 and 3 in bracket 2 now similarly we will go for sf2 now for that also we will write z now again in bracket 2 now here we will write down x2 and in 3 into bracket x1 so 3 in bracket x1 now we will write down or this formula 2 we will keep x2 blank we will write down 3 first right we will write down x1 as a 1 and for x2 we need a value of p associated with x1 so value of p associated with x1 is 3 so we will write down 3 so this we have dealt with the second formula second structural formula now similarly we will go with sf3 now sf3 also z is equal to now here we have first 3 we will write down x1 then 2 in bracket x2 now for this for this 3 in bracket 1 2 in bracket x2 means what the value associated with p1 that is 3 so we will make it 3 now we have got third formula and the last one sf4 that is z is equal to 3 in bracket x2 and 2 in bracket x1 that we can write it like this 3 we will keep the bracket empty 2 value of x1 is 1 and value of x2 it is the value associated with x1 so it is 2 now with this method we got four structural formulas and we will write it so four structures formulas number one first one z is equal to 2 in bracket 1 and 3 in bracket 2 second formula z is equal to 2 in bracket 3 and 3 in bracket 1 third formula z is equal to 3 in bracket 1 and 2 in bracket 3 and the last one fourth formula z is equal to 3 in bracket 2 and 2 in bracket 1 so these are the four formulas that we have got it now we have to select which is the best one and which is the most suitable one so for that we have very simple rule now just concentrate on these formulas we have to now we have to consider all this formula in this structure z is equal to p1 x1 into p2 x2 though we have calculated with the various combination but still now 
we have to compare all these formulas with this that is z is equal to p1 x1 and p2 x2 now the rule is the rule for selecting the best suitable formula is that whatever the values we have x values those should be in ascending order so how it can be ascending order means simply if we we'll compare x1 it should be lesser than x2 then x2 should be lesser than x3 it is like this now in our case in this formula now if we we'll check with this x1 and x2 so here this formula it is suitable if we we'll check for second here x1 is greater than x2 so we don't need this so this won't work third one here we have 1 and 3 so x1 is lesser than x2 so this will work and the fourth one 2 and 1 so here x1 is greater than x2 so this won't work so we are going to dealt with these two formulas formula number 1 and formula number 3 that is z is equal to 2 in bracket 1 and 3 in bracket 2 second third formula z is equal to 3 in bracket 1 and 2 in bracket 3 so with this method we have selected that which is the most suitable formula with possible combinations so out of four combinations we know that two are possible structural formulas that will be easier or that will be most suitable for this gearbox now we are going to see how we can get with the structural diagram in the last video we have seen that how we can select a structural formula with the condition or with the rule the rule was the x value should be in ascending order so actually i have done a small mistake over here so it should be like this that x1 should be lesser than x2 and x2 should be lesser than x3 so this is a small modification just in this video next after this we will check it that how we can go with the next procedure that is structural diagram so in this video we are going to see that how we can draw a structural diagram now we have two formulas that number 1 z is equal to 2 in bracket 1 and 3 in bracket 2 and one more formula that we got it z is equal to 3 in bracket 1 and 2 in bracket 3 so these are two formulas and of these two formulas these are the most suitable formulas as per our calculation so in this formulas how we can draw with the structural diagram now for drawing a structural diagram we have we have to draw few lines so number one there are there are two things that we are going to separate one is horizontal line and second is vertical line so for horizontal line how many horizontal lines we should draw it so we should draw horizontal line which is equal to 6 now what is that which is equal to z z is what number of speed steps so we have already calculated z value that is p1 into p2 and that is equal to 3 into 2 which is equal to 6 so we have to draw six horizontal lines and for vertical lines we know that it is two stage gearbox so there will be one input shaft one output shaft and one intermediate shaft so it is simply while writing in formula it should be n plus 1 now here this n stands for number of stages so total we have two stages and plus 1 which is equal to 3 so while drawing it we have to draw six horizontal lines and three vertical lines so let's move further if we'll go with the first formula z is equal to 2 in bracket 1 3 in bracket 2 so we will draw first six horizontal lines 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 now three vertical lines so this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so total we have drawn six horizontal lines and three vertical lines now in this how we should proceed now this first part 2 as to 1 it denotes stage 1 so this 2 as to 1 2 in bracket 1 this is the first stage and this 3 in bracket 2 
this deals with the second stage now we know we have total three shafts so we will write down shaft number one shaft number two and shaft number three and what about speeds so speeds it ranges from here so first basic is one second third fourth fifth and the last one is six so we are going to get the six speeds over here six different speeds and these are two stages in it now how to draw with the structural formula now in this we have to calculate from this one so what it shows it shows it that from this first shaft on the first shaft we are going to set one point so we are going to deal with this so whatever we have value of x that on first shaft we should have one point and from that one point so this is one point on shaft one and from that one point next step is there will be two lines so two lines we are going to draw it and those two lines should be having gap of again the third point one so as per this formula there should be one point on shaft one so as it is six lines so its midpoint will be somewhere here that is 3.5 so we will write it as suppose 3.5 so this is the first point now through this point we are going to draw two lines gap of one so here we are going to plot second point here we are going to plot third point if we'll join it so it will be the gap of one that is three and four it is a gap of one and it fulfills our all condition that there is point on shaft one and two lines at the gap of one so similarly if we check for the second stage it is already mentioned that there should be two points so our answer is right so there should be two points and on those two points those two points are in shaft two and from these two points each point there should be three lines at a gap of two so first we will concentrate on suppose this point the lower one so we are going to draw three lines from this point at a gap of a two so first line if we'll draw it here the second line will be somewhere here and the third line will be somewhere here so we will join it so this is done similarly for this point also it will be this first point second point and third point just from this diagram you'll come to know that these are crossing the these lines are crossing but no point is repeated that on each point we have separate lines especially on this one on this we have multiple lines that is fine but at the end points we are getting only one speed so this is related to the first structural formula and we will go with the second structural formula the second structural formula is this z is equal to 3 in bracket 1 and 2 in bracket 3 so again the same thing we will draw six lines and three vertical lines so this is one two three horizontal line one two three four five and six so in this again we will start with this now this is our shaft one this is our shaft two and this is our shaft three and in this we have the first stage that is three in bracket one and second stage two in bracket three the similar points we will start with it the first one that there will be one point on this so we will write down the speeds also one two three four five and six now in this there will be one point so there will be one point at the middle that is at the level of 3.5 and from that one point we are going to draw three lines so again as it is at the midpoint so draw here this is our one point and at a distance of one again so at a distance of one this and this here we will get at the midpoint we will join the line and from this in the second stage there will be three points on the shaft two so there are three points on the shaft two and from that shaft two we are going to draw two lines each at a distance of again three so from each point we are going to draw two lines at a distance of 
3. So for this, if we'll get with the lower point, so for a distance of 3, this is the one point and this is the other. So we will join these two points. One is finished. Second one, for this point, again here we will be having sec uh, next point and then other one will be here. So we can join it. And the last point, this will be one line and this will be other point. So if you check it, any if you check for the particular points, the distance is 3 here. The similarly, we have followed in each and every point. So if you check, compare with the two diagrams, you will come to know the method is same. Now, how to select the best structural diagram for this or for best structural formula from these two? Now, there is a very simple thing that we are going to calculate for node. So the next point we are going to see is that is node. Now we have done with the structural diagrams. Now in the structural diagrams, we are going to check it the node formula that from that node summation, we are going to select that which diagram is the most suitable. Now for that, we have to select the lower speeds. So if you'll compare with the diagram one, so the lower speed is somewhere here, one. After that, it's related load speed, it is here. And next one is this. So if we'll add all those things, so first one, it's node summation. So it will be 1 plus 3 plus 3.5. So it is 7.5. Now for the second diagram, if we check it, the node is, this is the first, this is second, and this is third. So the value related to this, it is 1, this is 2.5 and this is 3.5. So we will add those values. So node summation is equal to 1 plus 2.5 plus 3.5. So it is equal to 7. Now we are going to select the addition which is greater. So in the first case, we are having 7.5 and in the second case we are having 7. So we are going to select the first diagram. So the first diagram, the best structural formula is z is equal to 2 in bracket 1 and 3 in bracket 2. So this is the most suitable and best formula for our problem. We have seen that how we can select the most suitable structural formula and for that the criteria criteria for most suitable structural formula it was number one first thing that we should have n max the maximum n max value node addition or we can write down that node addition it should be maximum and there is one more criteria the second criteria the p value of p value of last stage should be lesser now as our problem is of two stage problem so this condition it is applied for greater than two stage so this we are not going to use it this much the first condition it is satisfied for us in the second case it is for three stage or more than that so as per our calculation in all criteria we have the most suitable formula that is two in bracket one and three in bracket two now here our subsection a it is completed now we will proceed for section two like question b now that is which is asked for a ray diagram so from here we will start with drawing of a ray diagram and speed chart so what is ray diagram actually ray diagram is also a representation of structural formula only and it shows you the transmission so the ray diagram 
it is a representation of structural formula and next one that it shows you transmissions transmission line now how to proceed with ray diagram for ray diagram first we will calculate all the speeds now we know that we have geometric ratio that is phi is equal to 1.41 that is already mentioned in the numerical now from that again we have calculated z value that is it is 6 now means what we are having total 6 speeds in a gearbox and there is one more speed that is of motor or it is also denoted as engine motor and which is equal to 1500 rpm that is 1500 rpm now we will denote it as engine motor or nm now before starting with this we will calculate all the speeds so for calculating all the speeds first we will get with first speed that is n1 now in our case n1 is 120 rpm now for calculating n2 as we are dealing with geometric progression ratio so it should be n1 into phi so n1 is 120 rpm and phi is 1.141 now it is equal to 169 rpm now similarly for n3 we can write n1 into phi square so instead of uh, showing calculation i'll directly write down the values and n3 it becomes 239 rpm the next n4 n4 is equal to n1 into phi cube which is equal to 336 rpm similarly n5 now n5 is n1 into phi raised to power 4 that is 474 rpm and last one it is n6 that is n1 into phi raised to power 5 which is equal to 669 rpm so through these things we have calculated six speeds those are like this so n1 is 120 rpm n2 is 169 n3 is 239 n4 is 336 and 5 it is 474 and last one and 6 it is 669 rpm now here n6 is the last step so we will write like this so here nz which is equal to n6 which is equal to 669 rpm and we have already discussed that nm we will write it as engine motor or just motor which is equal to 1 500 rpm that is 1500 rpm which is supplied to gearbox now here also we have one criteria for drawing a ray diagram now we will write down the criteria now criteria says that if we have engine motor the speed of engine motor it is greater than nz nz it's this value 669 and here it is an em now this is the condition actually in our problem so if engine motor is greater than nz then the vertical lines we need to draw vertical lines will be n plus 2 now n it is number of stages plus 2 which is equal to 4 and horizontal lines for horizontal lines we should have z total speeds plus 1 now we know it is 6 6 plus 1 which is equal to 7 now in our cases in our case we are going to follow this but what if this criteria is not fulfilled means what if nem it is greater than sorry it is lesser than or equal to nz then these vertical lines it should be n plus 2 that is similar one now here from this it will be 4 and and horizontal lines that will be equal to z only that is 6 in our case but in our cases this 
first condition is satisfied so we will get with this that we are going to draw four vertical lines and seven horizontal lines for drawing or for completing a ray diagram so we will start with that before that we need to draw structural diagram first or we need to refer structural diagram first so i'll just draw it quickly a structural diagram so that it will be easier to compare so in structural diagram we have three vertical lines and six horizontal so this is one two three vertical lines two three four five and six so again here we have speed one two three four five six and if we we'll check for shaft so we have three shafts shaft number one shaft number two shaft number three and structural diagram is two in bracket one and three in bracket two now we have already done structural diagram so i am not going to repeat it i'll directly draw it so this is one two so just join the lines again from this so here we have completed our first thing that is structural diagram so from this structural diagram we are going to draw a ray diagram so already we have determined that we are going to draw seven horizontal lines and vertical lines which are equal to four so we will draw the same one now this is one two three four so there are four vertical lines and seven horizontal lines one two three four five six and seven so we have total drawn seven horizontal lines and four vertical lines so we'll name it this is speed one or we will write down n1 this is n2 this is n3 this is n4 this is n5 this is n6 and the remaining part we will keep it later now this is shaft one this is shaft two this is shaft three now what about this point it is the motor shaft or through this point we are going to get a direct speed from the motor now as already we have described that ray diagram it is a representation of structural formula and it shows transmission between the last shaft and preceding shaft this is most important thing that it shows you transmission it shows you transmission between or of last shaft and preceding shaft so now we will draw with the ray diagram for ray diagram you have to check for the lowest lines or lowest speed now in our case if you check for the structural formula the lowest speed is 1 so here we will fix with the first point then after that the related point with it it is 3 on shaft 3 3 again after that we have relative point that is 5 now it is the last shaft it is the speed of last shaft and next is it is preceding shaft now for preceding shaft it is shaft 2 now the thing is in our case for preceding shaft if we we'll check with the diagram so here we have line 3 point 3 but we are not going to deal with that we are going to take the second point this is second point so at 4 so while drawing the ray diagram you have to get with this point the next preceding shaft again this is just for this numerical why is that so because it satisfy our criteria that here the motor speed it is a greater than the last maximum speed that is nem it is greater than nz that is why we are doing this if we have different criteria then we have to follow different one so for this numerical we are following this now here we are going to join these points 
Now this is regarding for shaft 2 and 3. Again on shaft 2 we have the next preceding point is this. Now here it was N4. Now here it we are getting N5. That is fine. After that the next point on shaft 1 or next point on shaft 1 it is somewhere here at this point but we are not going to deal with this. Now for that we are going to directly get with the next point that is N6 and we are going to join it. Now as as the definition says it is preceding shaft the last shaft and preceding shaft. So we are going to get it this point we are going to join it and the last one that from the motor shaft we are going to get the speed. So if you check with the structural diagram and ray diagram you will come to know that both are similar the speeds are similar but only the thing is that it is a relation between the last shaft and res its respective preceding shaft. Now here we have selected N1, N3 and N5 as per our structural diagram that those were the lowest speed. After that we have added plus 1 in this ray diagram means instead of third point we have taken fourth then after that we have taken fifth point that is N5 and at the end we have selected N6 and from that N6 we have joined to the motor shaft. So this is the ray diagram which is asked for uh, 5 marks. So you can write it that same pattern that for shaft 1 and 2 it was 2 in bracket 1 and for shaft 3 sorry for shaft 2 and 3 it is 3 in bracket 2. So here, here it completes our uh, ray diagram. Now for speed chart it is the similar diagram we are going to draw everything similar only we are going to complete the remaining lines of 0.5. Now how let us see now we are going to copy exact similar structure so we know that it is four lines we have one two three and four and we have total seven lines so one two three four five six and here we have seven so total seven lines now after that here we are going to write its speed so it is n1 here it is n2 n3 n4 n5 n6 now here we have shaft 1 shaft 2 shaft 3 and this is machine shaft now after that here if you check for the speeds it is 2 in bracket 1 and 3 in bracket 2 next after that we are going to copy the same one we are going to first check for n1 then n3 then n5 similarly we are going to select point n4 we are going to join these points after that we are going to select n6 so here we have n6 so we'll join n6 it is next point we have n5 then we are going to connect the motor shaft then after this we have three points remaining for this particular point we are going to join n6 n4 and n2 so we are joining those points and it is showing speeds at the respective points so here whatever we have calculated initially the speeds of shaft that we can indicate over here now n1 it is 120 rpm now n2 it was 169 then n3 it is 239 n4 it was 336 n5 it is 474 and n6 it was 669 now everything is in rpm revolutions per minute so this shows you diagram or this is our speed chart now all, all these things whatever we have seen those are asked for 5 marks in exam. So here we have completed our section B. Now in this video we are going to discuss how we can draw a gearing diagram. Actually it is not, actually it is not asked in the exam but we will write it. We will try to discuss it because 
uh, in most of the numerical it may be asked so in this particular numerical it is not asked but still we are uh, discussing it now how to proceed with the gearing diagram now for a gearing diagram first thing we should know our structural formula that structural formula is already we have determined that two in bracket one and three in bracket two now here we have already determined that p1 is equal to two p2 is equal to three similarly x1 is equal to one and x2 is equal to two now these are the values that we have already determined decided through this formula now we need few values from here those are p1 and p2 now we know it is two stage formula sorry it is two stage numerical so in two stage we will write it like first stage and second stage now in this one now first stage how many gears are there so in case of first stage we will write it as one and in the second stage which is the last stage we will write it as p2 now here we have two and here we have three now what it shows we have already discussed earlier that this p value it shows you number of gear pair means what in the first stage there should be two pairs of gear which are there on the shafts and similarly in second stage there should be three pairs of a gear but what about remaining shafts what about remaining intermediate shaft so from this we can only determine about first and second stage but there is no clue about intermediate shaft for that we can calculate total number of gears so total number of gears in the gearbox it is given by 2 into addition of p values so here in our case it is 2 plus 3 which is equal to 10 so from this formula we know we can get the value that is there are 10 gears in this system means what if we'll segregate it on the first shaft on the first shaft there will be two gears on the second shaft there will be five gears and on the third shaft it will be three now already we have determined regarding two and three that we have already determined here and remaining is 10 minus that we can write in bracket 10 minus 2 minus 3 okay. so we have already determined that how we can proceed with this is on shaft 1 we are having 2 gears on shaft 2 we are having 5 gears and on shaft 3 we have 3 gears now while drawing this gearing diagram try to draw it first and the last shaft now how now first we will draw shaft 1 after that we will go with shaft 2 and after that we will go with shaft 3 so on first shaft we know there are two gears so for two gears first try to draw a smaller gear and then a little bit larger one now these are completely random it is not as per the dimensions so you, you can just draw it randomly but make sure that there is a difference between their diameters so here we have gear 1 and here we have gear 2 now similarly on the third shaft now first we have completed on third shaft we have three shafts sorry three gears so similarly just make sure that first one should be the smaller one after second one it should be a little bit greater than that and third one now in this case just try to draw a gear which is middle of it yes which is mean of it so here if you check it first second third they are having different diameters if you check from the left hand side it is much smaller then after that it is bigger one and third one it is middle of that okay. now we have drawn with two and three gears 
the remaining are five while drawing a gearing diagram make sure that it shows you or it must show you that it is in contact the gear pairs are in contact and it is functioning now how we can draw that now here in our case suppose if we we'll check for this now for on shaft 2 we are going to draw five gears so first thing we will try to join this gear so this is our first gear this is gear 1 after that if we we'll check it there is one more gear it should be connected so here draw it like this so this is gear 2 now remaining are 3 for that if we we'll check with this now we know we have a smaller gear now do not draw a gear which is directly in contact with it so just try to draw a gear which is a little bit away from it so it is this so if we we'll check it the, it should be on the same line so this is on the same line as you can check it after that next one for this also for this gear also we are going to draw the similar pattern and similarly for the smaller gear draw a gear on shaft 2 if we we'll check all the lines you will come to know that these are in a similar line similarly these two are in similar line similarly this these two are in a similar line so here if we we'll check it this completes our gearing diagram and in this there are total 10 number of gears we we'll check it here we have two gears here in this we have five gears and here in this we have three gears so it becomes 10 gears so this is the common method to draw a gearing diagram so for gearing diagram we should know the structural formula and from that structural formula you can complete the gearing diagram easily so if you can make one box for it here it shows you gearing diagram so this completes our point but this point it is not asked in this numerical this is just for additional information before moving to section 3 find number of teeth of each gear we have to assume few things and in this we are going to check for spindle speeds so now for spindle speeds we know we have already determined speeds there are six speeds now we are going to round it off so we will make one table now in that the first column will be of speeds in rpm now second so it will be calculated rpm and third one it will be rounded off now we will make one table now we know we have total six speeds so it is one two three four five and six so total we have six number of speeds now we will write one by one and we will round them off now here now first speed it is n1 that is n2 n3 n4 n5 and n6 now if we we'll check for the actual values it is 120 second value it is 169 n3 we have calculated 239 n4 it is 336 n5 it is 474 and n6 it is 669 now we are going to round it off how now for 120 we will keep it 120 only for 169 uh, so we will keep it 170 for 239 we will make it 240 then for the next 336 it will be 340 for 474 we will keep it 470 and for 669 it will be 670 
now these are new rounded off rpm that we are going to use it for next session that is for uh, finding number of teeth and deviation chart now how we have did, done this simply if it is greater than 5 then we have went for the next number and if it is lesser than 5 then we have kept the same number so as per that 120 it is equal to 120 for 169 it is 170 for 239 it is 240 for 336 it is 340 for 474 it is 470 and for 669 it is 670 now in this video we will complete our section c and d that is finding number of teeth and deviation chart so these two things we are going to discuss in this video now for finding number of teeth and a deviation chart the both things we are going to do it simultaneously now we know this is the numerical of two stage now in this two stage numerical we are going to separate stage one and stage two for that first we will draw about first stage ray diagram Now, a ray diagram, we are not going to draw it completely, we will just draw it a partial part of it which deals with the first stage only. And if we check for the ray diagram, that will deal with shaft 1 and shaft 2 again with the particular points only. And those points are N4, N5, and N6. Now, from this, if we check for the ray diagram, so these are the lines which we are going to consider it okay now in this also n4 is known to us that is 340 n5 it is 470 and n6 it is 670 if we check for its gearing diagram so this is our shaft one and this is our shaft two now in this Here we have phase one diagram, stage one diagram is like this. This is a gearing diagram. So if you check for the speeds, you'll come to know here it will be having 670 rpm, here it will be 470, and this will be 340 rpm. Now this is related. To the ray diagram now next we are going to get with the ratio and that ratio it will be equal to g is equal to input speed divided by output speed this gear ratio which is equal to output depth divided by input depth now this formula you might have seen that is n1 t1 is equal to n2 t2 now here instead of t2 we are going to write it like this that is n1 z1 is equal to n2 z2 so this is the most common formula and it stands for if we check for a gear ratio what it will show you the gear ratio will show you n1 upon n2 which is equal to z2 upon z5 so this gear ratio we are going to describe it now instead of z1 and z2 we are going to use a dash formulas so if we check for the gearing diagram so this is our gearing diagram now in this if we check for point a now here this point a here we are going to write for point a here we have written point v now these are the transmission lines now for point a if we check it this if we go with this point this is our point a and this is our point a dash now here if we write down about gear ratio at point a it will be na upon na dash 
which will be equal to z a dash upon z a and which is equal to n a is 670 rpm from the diagram and n a dash it is 340 rpm and it's equal to 1.97 again we will check for it here we are having line a and here we have point a and a dash now from this a dash it is 340 rpm and a is 670 rpm so we have written the similar one n a it is 670 and n a dash it is 340 rpm which is equal to 1.97 now similarly we can get with gear ratio at point b now that is also n b upon n b dash which is equal to z b dash upon z b which is equal to now n b speed it is same that is 670 rpm and n dash b speed it is 470 rpm now which is equal to 1.43 now again we will check it for point b so for point b if we'll check it now here for point b this is our point b and here this n phi it is point b dash so it is 470 so for n dash b it is 470 and for n b it is 670 now here we got two gear ratio that is ga is equal to 1.97 and gb is equal to 1.43 so we will write down as equation 1 and 2 now next value I will check for it now we are going to write down the formula for center distance so for center distance we can center distance between the gears it is equal to c1 which is equal to ca which is equal to cb so it should be similar for non deviated formula now what is that non deviation we will see it later just remember that this is a formula for center distance and if we we'll check for ca it will be m z a plus m z a dash divided by 2 means what it is average distance similarly m z b plus m z b dash this is for center or distance of b gears and this is center distance of a now if we we'll check for it you will get the formula which is z a plus z a dash which is equal to z b plus z b dash so this formula we will get it from the center distance and now if we will put this equation number one and two in this formula so we will get it like this so we need relation between z a and z b so for that we can replace any one of it so if we'll go with it go with that so it will be z a and z a dash it is 1.97 z a which is equal to z b plus 1.43 z b so if you solve this you'll come to know that z b will be 1.22 times of z a or here z a will be 0.81 times of zb so these two relations we will get it from above formula now similarly if we we'll check for equation number 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 we will get two more relations that is za dash is equal to 1.97 za and zb dash it is equal to 1.3 Four three z b it is already written there so we are just writing it again so from equation one and two we will get two more equations that is z a dash is equal to one point nine seven z a and for z b dash it is equal to one point four three z b now after that we are going to draw one table and this table will give you number of teeth in the gearing system plus the deviation in it now if there is a deviation between the center distance as we have already written one condition that here this c1 is equal to ca which is equal to cb so 
the center distance between these two things should be similar if it is not then it has some deviation and we have to find that so finding that deviation first we know that we are having two gearing systems ga and gb so we are going to draw it first so for ga and gb each and every point these two points will be having we need four columns so we will write down first ga that is equal to 1.97 similarly here we will write gb that is 1.43 now in this we will make four columns again so this is one this is two this is three and remaining is four similarly here we have one here we have two here we have three and the last one it is four now after that what we need to write first column will be of z a second column will be of z a dash third column will be of g a and fourth column will be of c a similarly here it will be z b here it will be z b dash third one it will be g b and fourth one it will be c b now we know that already we have value of g a and g b but those are the values what we got it from the equation from here this table we are going to get different values that we are going to find it out now here in our case z a value we are going to take it random the minimum value that is 18 but what about z z dash and all those values so for z dash already we have one value that is 1.97 of z a this is the value of it similarly for g a it will be z a dash upon z a similarly for c a it will be z a plus z a dash for z b we have one relation between z a and z b that is 1.22 times of z a that is the value of z b similarly for z b dash it is already here it is 1.43 times of z b similarly for g b it is z b dash upon z b and the last one c b it is addition of z b plus z b dash so these are the points that we are going to see so for this we are going to get three revisions and from those three revisions we are going to calculate whether it is satisfying our condition is or not so here first we will write down 18 that is minimum number of ticks required second is 19 and third one is 20 so these are the three revisions that we are going to take it for this gearing system now in this case 18 if we we'll calculate the values i'm not going to show you calculation it will be 35 it will be 1.94 here it will be 53 it will be 22 here it will be 31 it will be 1.41 and here it will be 53 similarly if we check for 19 it will be 37 it will be 1.94 it will be 56 it will be 23 33 1.43 and 56 and last one for 20 it will be 39 1.95 59 then 24 then 34 1.42 and last one is 58 now here we have calculated all the values as we have already checked it that there is one condition that c1 should be equal to c a and it should be equal to c b now for checking this we will check for the value of c a and c b from the above table we have got few values number one c a value it is 59 and c b value it is 58 so if we we'll check for it c1 is equal to 59 which is equal to 58 but the condition is failing so that is why here we have deviation now there is deviation in this now we have to remove that deviation so there is a deviation because here the c1 value is equal to ca but ca value is not equal to cb so 
we need to find it out we need to increase it now for satisfying this condition that ca is equal to cb we have to make this 58 value as 59 so for removing deviation we have to make cb is equal to 59 now it is 58 but we are making it 59 so if we'll make it 59 means what that zb plus zb dash it will become 59 now hence if we'll check it we will make the reverse calculation so zb dash it will become 35 next so here instead of 34 in previous value it will become 35 now from this we can write down few values number one z a it is 20 now z b it is 24 then z a dash it is 39 z b dash it is equal to 35 here gear ratio a at point a it will be 1.97 Gear ratio at point B it is 1.43, and the last one C1 the center distance it is 59 units. So, here in this stage one, we got four values of it number one is this, number two is this, number three is this, and number four is this this is relative for stage one now similarly we are going to move for stage two now for stage two we are going to follow the same method same practice now for stage two we know that we are having total three gear pairs so for that again the first thing that we have to draw a ray diagram of it so for a ray diagram i'll draw it now from this again there were six lines now here we will draw few lines so this was one point that is 120 rpm this was 170 rpm this was 240 rpm this was 340 this was 470 and the last was 670 rpm so here it was related to 470 rpm next was 240 and in between it was 340 so join those points it is already we have discussed it now we will just name it it will be c line c line d and line e now these are the three lines that on which we are going to concentrate similarly if we check for the gearing diagram so this is shaft 2 as it is stage 2 this is shaft 3 now on this again this was a smaller gear then here it was a little bit middle one after that this was one smaller gear and the third one last one it was the average of it you can say now similarly here we have drawn two gears here we have one and here we have other one so here in this case there were three gear pairs and if we we'll check for its rpm so here it would be 340 rpm then next we had 240 rpm next we have 120 rpm and last one it is 470 rpm now we got all rpms now after that the same structure we are going to follow it we are going to calculate first gear ratio sorry speed ratio at point c G, c d e like that now here we will calculate first at point c now for gear ratio at point c it will be nc upon nc dash that is equal to z dash upon ZC. Now here NC, if we check for NC value, so it is NC value is this one and dash value it is at the end point. 
so nc value it is 340 and dash value it is 470 so gc value it will be 0.72 similarly for gd if you check for it it will be nd upon n dash d which is equal to z d dash and z t which is equal to if you check for it then here nd value it is 340 rpm and n dash d value it is 240 rpm so which is equal to 1.42 similarly for ge it is equal to n e upon n e dash the speed which is equal to z e dash upon z e now similarly z e dash here it is 40 rpm and divided by 120 so it will be 2.83 now if we check for this all dash values those are common so here dash values are common because these values are completely common values so these are completely common values so this is 340 this is 340 this is 340 and the remaining values are changing so we have already calculated gc gd and ge now if we check for it from these we we'll get few more equations like zc dash it will be 0.72 times of zc zd dash it is equal to 1.42 times of zd and ze dash is equal to 2.83 times of ze now if we check for the gear ratios of it you will come to know ge is greater than gd which is greater than gc now while drawing the table also we have to draw it in this order only so first it should be e point second it should be d point and the next one it should be c point so while drawing the table we will repeat the similar values now for center distance again here in stage 1 we have written c1 here we will write c2 similarly here it should be cc is equal to ce which is equal to c now the center distance between all these things it should be equal and similarly if we check for it the cc will be zc plus zc dash d will be zd plus zd dash and e will be ze plus Z e dash. So this condition must be satisfied. If this condition is not satisfying, then again it is having deviation. So again we have to remove the deviation. But before that, we will check it whether it has deviation or not. Now in this, we will compare this equation, first equation with this, then again with this, so that we will get two different values. So we will compare it. So first one it will be z e plus z e dash which is equal to z d plus z d dash here similarly z e plus z e dash which is equal to z c plus z c dash so if you compare all those things you will get one equation that is z d is equal to 1.59 times of z e similarly here z c is equal to 2.23 times of ZE. Now, from this, what we have done, we have taken the value of ZD in terms of ZE. Similarly, here we have taken the value of ZC in terms of ZE. Now, after this, we are going to proceed with the further table. Now, for drawing the table, For drawing the table, we need three main things that is GE, GD, and GC. And in each column, under each column, we are going to draw four columns. So, first is suppose this, second is this. So, we will draw it, and under each column, we have different values. So, here we have GE that is 2.83. Similarly, here we have GD that is 1.42, and after that we have 
GC which is equal to 0 0.72. Now in this again we are going to draw four columns. Now in that the first column will be ZE this is dealing with ZE then again ZE dash then again GE again CE similarly same pattern we are going to follow it here we have ZB then ZB dash then GD then C D. similarly here ZC get C dash GC and C C now we should know their formulas now we know we're going to start Z E from 18 only but for Z E dash we have already derived two formulas it is 2.83 times of Z E similarly G E will be Z E dash divided by Z E similarly C E it will be Z E dash plus Z E this is done for Z D it is 1.59 times of Z E for Z D dash it is 1.42 times of Z D and for G D it is Z dash D divided by Z T similarly C D it will be Z D dash plus Z D for ZC it is 2.23 times of ZE, ZC dash it is 0 0.72 times of ZC and for GC it is ZC dash upon ZC and the last one CC it is ZC plus ZC dash. So here we have completed the table. Now again we are going to take three values of it. Now, so first we will take 18, then 19, and then 20. So here we have taken 18, 19, and 20. The remaining values we will calculate with the formula, and those will be 51. Here it is 2.83, 69, 29, 41, 1.41. 70, 40, 29, 73, 69. For the 19, it is 54, 2.84, 73, 30, 43, 1 43, 73, 42, 13, 0.71, and the last one is 72. For 20, it is 57. It is 2.85, 77, then 32, then 45, then 1.41, then 77, then 45, then 32, then 0 0.7 and 77. Now here from this one, if we check for CE, then CD and for CC, the values are equal. So here our C2 is equal to CC is equal to CD which is equal to CE that is 77. So here we do not have any deviation in this. So in this gearbox there was only deviation in stage 1 but in stage 2 there is no deviation. So as there is no de deviation we can directly go for the values. So here we will get ZC is equal to 45. ZD is equal to 32 and ZE is equal to 20. Similarly, ZC dash it will be 32, ZD dash it will be 45, and ZE dash is equal to 57. Now, next it is GC is equal to 0 0.71, GD it is equal to 1.41, and GE is equal to 2.85 with C2 which is equal to 77. Now here we will get few values of gears. 
number of tethon gears so initially it was four values and here it will be five six seven here it will be eight nine and ten so from this we got 10 values of gears that is number of tethon each gear now here we have finished with uh, gears and deviation and the next point will be of deviation chart stage one and there is no deviation in stage two so there is a deviation in stage one and there is no deviation in stage two so here now in this we are going to find out the stage one so the table above table given that is of stage one now if we we'll check it here we have value of 59 here this is value of 59 and here we have 58 so in this we are going to make it 59 we have already done this so here we are going to get 59 value as we will get the 59 over here so there will be changes in case of next table that is gb and zb dash also so from that we have already calculated that zb dash is equal to 35 and now we will calculate with gb that is gear ratio so for calculating gb how we can proceed with it so we know that gb is equal to zb dash upon zv which is also equal to nb upon nb dash now if we check for z dash b and zb so from that the zb dash value we have 35 and zb value it is 24 so its value will be 1.46 so therefore nb upon nb dash that will be 1.46 so this is the formula that we are going to check it now after getting this value 1.46 now deviation speeds we will calculate theoretical and uh, practical so for that we are going to make one table and before that we need speed chart so i'll draw quickly a speed chart over here so we have already done a speed chart so it has four shafts and seven speeds so it is one two three four five six and last one is seven so from this now we know this is 120 rpm this is 170 this is 240 340 470 and the last one is 670 now this is shaft 1 2 and 3 this is machine shaft and we will draw diagram speed chart now for that already we have discussed these points so i'll just quickly draw it so this is completed now we will draw with the table now for that we will make one table which will be having similar thing the six speeds so first one is serial number what we have it second is speed that is theoretical speed and next column it will be of practical speeds so n it is practical now we will again go for six speeds so one two three four five and the last one is six it is one two three four five and six now already we have theoretical speeds we have written that is 120 170 240 then 340 then 470 and the last one is 670 now there is deviation in a particular point only and that is related to b so we'll focus on only the speeds which are related to b and from the diagram this is b and this is a so if you check for b the speed deviation it is for these two speeds number one is this and number two is this so there will be deviation for 670 rpm and 470 rpm so we have to write down the values deviation for this and this 
now all the values are completely similar so that is why we will write it 120 rpm 170 rpm 240 rpm 340 rpm and we will keep those these two things blank that is 470 and 670 for getting those two values we will write down like this now for 470 rpm now we know we are going to calculate for nb dash n dash b that is nb divided by year ratio which is equal to 670 divided by 1.46 which we will take 459 rpm so this is first value we got it and for the next one for 670 now how we can proceed with it now for 670 rpm we need a next speed so we haven't calculated next speed so first we will calculate for n7 now as we are going to deal with n6 so we need next value so that we will get the deviation now for n7 the formula will be 120 into 5 raised to power 6 which is equal to 945 rpm now for 945 rpm we are going to check we are going to calculate for n dash b which is equal to n b upon gb which is equal to 945 divided by 1.46 which is equal to 647 rpm now as the deviation at the last speed that was for 6 n6 so that is why as the deviation for n6 so that is why we have used additional speed that is n7 now finally we got two answers and those are number first one for 470 rpm we got 459 now if you check it we are getting deviation that is lesser speed and for 670 rpm we got 647 so for 670 we got 647 so these are two deviations what we got it now after getting the deviations we will write down the values of it directly and then we will draw it in a deviation chart so for speed deviation we will make one table again now for speed deviation we have one formula that delta percentage is equal to n actual actual rpm divided minus theoretical rpm divided by theoretical rpm multiplied by 100 so from this formula we can calculate what is the maximum deviation we have it now for that the next process we are going to make one table so in that table we will write down first n theoretical then n actual or practical and delta n now there are six speeds so one two three four five and here we last that is six so in this case first one is 120 rpm then 170 then 240 then 340 then 470 and the last one is 670 rpm so in actual case we have 120 170 then 240 then 340 then 459 and the last one that is 647 now in this case if we we'll check with this here we have value deviation that is 0 0 0 0 and here it is minus 2.34 and here it is minus 3.43 now here we are got getting the final deviation values through that formula so i'll just show you one of it so delta percentage how we can calculate 459 minus 470 divided by 470 into 100 so here for 459 we are going to get minus 2.34 percentage and similarly for delta percentage of 647 647 minus 670 divided by 670 into 100 which is equal to delta percentage that is minus 3.43 that we have already written now we got the deviation here now the last point is that limits of deviation now in this video we will see uh, limits limits of for deviation so this is the last point of our uh, numerical that is limits for deviations now how to calculate it 
for that we have one formula that is delta n which is lesser than or equal to plus or minus 10 into phi minus 1 percentage now here phi stands for geometric progression ratio and that is already given that is 1.41 so if we'll calculate this delta n will range in between 10 into bracket 1.41 minus 1 which is equal to delta n the percentage it will be 4.1 percent that is plus or minus now through these values we are going to draw this deviation on graph now how we can go with that first draw one vertical line that will be our y-axis and somewhere here we will take one reference point that is zero and from that we will draw one more horizontal line and on this we are going to draw with speeds now from zero we will start with it now here it is 120 1 2 3 4 5 and somewhere here it will be 6 now we will extend that line so we will write down those speeds also so here it is 120 the next is 170 the third one is 240 fourth one it is 340 fifth one that is 470 and the last one is 670 rpm now after getting writing these values we have to plot this is minus 1 this is minus 2 this is minus 3 and somewhere here it will be minus 4 similarly here it is 1 2 3 and 4 so plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and plus 4 now through these things we are going to draw our deviation part now we know for this first speed there is no deviation so this line will be similar similarly for 170 there is no deviation so the line will continue similarly for 240 there is no deviation now next we have 340 rpm so there is no deviation and for 470 rpm we have a deviation value which is equal to which is equal to 2.34 so that is here we are going to get one deviation line so that is 2.34 so minus 2.34 it is and for 670 if you'll check that is minus 3.43 so here somewhere you will get the deviation line so this chart it shows you the speed deviation chart so this is speed deviation chart which is the last point of our numerical and here our problem is over so which is asked for 20 marks now in this we have seen structural diagram ray diagram speed chart deviation chart calculating number of teeth so here it ends so if you have any doubt you can write down in comment section thank you